Lewis. Jan Castor is a composer and friend of Lonnie Clarkson's. They were working together on a one-woman show about Marilyn Monroe. And Jan, welcome to the show. Hello, good morning. Uh, tell us a little bit, did you know Pumpkin Pie? Because Pumpkin Pie has come into court and says she's very, very close to Lana Clarkson. You worked and were friends with Lana Clarkson. Did you ever come across Pumpkin Pie? A few times backstage when she was there in the VIP section, of course. Um, I, I could not say that I know her very well. Uh, Lana certainly was men mentioning her occasionally and saying Pumpkin Pie is my friend and so on and so on. So this is how I know the pumpkin pie. I okay. regret to say that I cannot say more about her. All right, Jan, tell us about now, you, you have a connection with Lana on the night that she died. You were actually supposed to be with her that night? Yes, she called me from a freeway because she got a call from House of Blues that she has to be there. But she was supposed, initially, she was supposed to come to my studio so we would work on her uh, prepare for her show. I was supposed to write the songs for her uh, for Marilyn Monroe One Woman Show. She was very excited about it and uh, she was very uh, determined to actually get the show on the road. Uh, but uh, I refused to go and join her at House of Blues and called her as I thought. Initially I'm calling her and talking to her. Hi Lana, that was Monday, following Monday. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't join you there. And uh, I heard on the phone, who is this? And that was her mother, mm. who was telling me, this is not Lana, this is her mother. I said, could I speak to Lana? Uh, I I'm afraid there has been a tragedy, uh, she explained uh, to me, but I cannot tell you what. And something, on a hunch, I put BBC News, four o'clock in the morning, I guess, that was Tuesday morning, and I heard about this uh, uh, murder being committed, uh, committed in the, uh, uh, Phil Spector mansion. Somehow I connected the dots and uh, y and yes, I was right. It was her. Wow. So you're working with Lana Clarkson and she's getting ready to put a show together because a lot of things that we're hearing from the defense is that Lana Clarkson was depressed. She had reached the end of the road out there in Hollywood and saw no future for herself. What did you see in Lana Clarkson? What did you hear from Lana Clarkson? Actually, I, what I saw, what I witnessed for months was enthusiasm. I uh, never believed and will never believe that she would commit suicide. First of all, her depression as such, I know that we all go from, uh, you know, through ups and downs, but certainly her depression, whatever it might be, and I have not witnessed her depressed. And we met very often. I was visiting her in her little house in Venice, and she was coming to my place. She has never, ever been depressed. She was actually quite uh, exhibiting the, this kind of uh, very, very joyous energy. Things are going to be better. Things are going, I don't mind doing what I'm doing right now, hosting, being a hostess in House of Blues. So, no, I, I really, it is beyond me why all of those women that claim to be her best friend join together to bash her. And what purpose would that serve, I don't know. Here is, here is a thought. Lana was a beautiful woman and actress. Do you really think that Lana, being an actress, would commit suicide and leave herself for posterity, uh, you know, with the pictures of her face being smashed to pieces? I don't think so. No woman would ever do it. Right, and spoke to her the night that all this happened. Right now, we gotta go to a break. We have with us a friend of Lana Clarkson's, Jan Castor, who did not testify in this trial. Jan, I'm surprised that you were not on the witness list, or were you? So am I. I have never been contacted. Um, a year ago, I was trying to reach some lawyers. I didn't know how to go about it. And a few weeks ago, a district attorney office gave me a call. But as they explained it to me, that the case is winding down. So the four, I didn't get the subpoena, I would have been glad to be there and uh, contest pumpkin pie testimony with my own, uh, as I am very sure that all this, uh, all this stuff about her depression is not only exaggerated, but I doubt that whether it's at all true. I have not seen Lana depressed. She had a very light 
very beautiful energy around her whenever she was coming over and she said let's go out and have a dinner by the way just wanted to say that we were we were only fellow artists and we shared an artistic intimacy that surpasses intimacy sometimes can surpass intimacy of very close friends uh, if if I am to collaborate with somebody and write music for somebody I have to know the emotions of that of that person this is my job as a film composer as a composer to extract those emotions from people and put them in in a music notes and you know what and impresses me on about what you're saying is contrary to the testimony about her being depressed it sounds as though she was brimming with creative ideas that she was working with you on she had this idea about a one-woman show about Marilyn Monroe you know we heard about her being fired from a play Brentwood Blondes where she was supposed to play Marilyn Monroe we know she idolized Marilyn Monroe and here she comes up with her own show <coughs> that she's working on with you and this is just before her death exactly uh, she was very excited about that she wanted to revive her career you know her career took different turns she was very popular at one stage at one time uh, uh, and you know she was working with Roger Corman that everybody knows um, and uh, I believe that even though uh, the career might have been kind of going through hard time. It was quite opposite. Her, her own attitude towards that is, was, I'm going to get even better than this. This is actually a blessing in disguise that I have to struggle for a while because now I have so many different ideas how to do new things in my life. She was extremely, extremely excited about those things. And I really, really do not understand what is going on about and why build a case on her depression just like that. Okay, it's so Jan, let me ask you this. Did she ever drink around you? No. Because she, you guys were working I together, so that wouldn't be a drinking environment. Because no, what we've we heard about we the depression is when she drank, you know, her day friends and her mm -hmm. night friends. And when she's with her night friends and she drank, then she expressed how depressed she was. Could that explain the difference between your experience of Lana and, say, Pumpkin Pie's experience of her? Well, take a look, you know, some other people around her, I would say, look really manic depressive. Lana was always like a sunshine. And she, uh, I've never shared a drink, not a glass of wine with her. I am a smoker. I remember that she would give me a hard time about me smoking and she would throw me out, you know, on the porch um, uh, when I was visiting her at the house in her house when she was actually so excitingly uh, packing her DVD selling things and marketing marketing herself she actually told me about <laughs> Craigslist how can how she's getting jobs and and at the time I didn't know the Craigslist thing so no that was just pure enthusiasm and I'm really really cannot emphasize enough if there was a drop of depression I would know about it mm -hmm. and yes we do have sometimes depressive mood everybody does mm -hmm. it's normal True that's, enough. You know, Lana Clarkson's yes. state of mind is at the heart of this case. The defense says she was on the verge of a breakdown, but prosecutors say the actress hoped for a breakthrough. Up next, we'll take a look at the video she left behind.